Cool. Well, let's just jump in. So hello to everybody watching. Uh, my name is Jake Glazer. I'm an ambassador for the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation, and I am incredibly excited to be joined here today with another one of our incredible ambassadors, D. So welcome. And how are you doing today? How are you doing? Hi, I'm good. I'm really good. So D, for people who are watching that uh, just don't know who you are would you mind just you know introducing yourself and sharing a little bit about what your what your life's all about yeah and hi everyone my name is d mata pompafi now mata watanka the new marriage uh, name um i'm a senior youth ambassador at elizabeth fraser pediatric aids foundation i'm also an ambassador for ECPAF as well so i'm a new mother like Jacob said, I'm a new wife. Everything is just so exciting. And yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I just like, I mean, I dream of the day of having my own family and to be able to see my brothers and sisters be able to walk that line and have mm -hmm. that reality in your life is just the biggest inspiration to me. Well, I mean, I think this is really fitting because we got Mother's Day and. Mm -hmm. I would like nothing more than to speak to a new mom. And I have a little fun picture here of me and my mom doing a little piggyback ride. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure all mothers get asked this question and I don't know if there's a right answer, but um, you're now a mom yourself. How did you prepare <laughs> for motherhood and what was EggPath's role in, in that experience in your life? Well, preparing for motherhood is a huge thing because it all starts at pregnancy and all the hormones are changing, the motherly instincts are kicking in and it's scary in a way, though exciting, because you don't know what to expect. You don't know um, like things that you need to do. I even installed an app on my phone that would prepare me in all the stages, like after the, all the trimesters and that will prepare me in birth as well. So um, it's, it's a bit scary knowing that you are carrying someone's life and they depend on you totally. So you need to watch almost everything that you do. Um, and ECPAV was really there to help, you know, because I got all my leaves and stuff because um, I had a bit of a complication that I had to stay home, even though we're already working from home, but I had to like relax and let things cool a bit in terms of work. So it really has been there for me Ekpaf, since my pregnancy. And now that I'm a mother, although people are still starting to come to work, they still think I'm a risk um, to COVID. So I'm still working mm. from home even now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, good <laughs> to know that you're supported. Um, yeah. And I, I mean, I can't imagine the, I mean, thank goodness for technology to be able to have your back <laughs> and walking you through the, these trimester of your pregnancy. Um, I know. I mean, you've dedicated so much of your time and, and your life to being a, a youth leader and an ambassador for the foundation and advocating for early testing, for early treatment, for mothers and babies. Mm -hmm. um, now that you're in this you're, you're, you're walking the walk now, now that you have mm -hmm. a daughter and she's been tested and she's HIV mm -hmm. negative. How does that make yeah. you feel? <laughs> Excited. I mean, yes. I've been telling my, my boss that now I can advocate for saying I'm, I'm a true example. I, I, I don't just say you, you, uh, you can be HIV positive and have a negative family. I have a negative family. My husband is negative. My baby is negative. I'm positive and undetectable. So it's all about saying this is me now see what i've been talking about all these years it's happening right now with me just take your medication and be good and then you you protect everyone surrounding you oh, that's so beautiful to think that yeah. that's where we are if you're hiv positive take your medication and you're not going to transmit the virus you're going to be healthy and what and a world it's, it's very it's very amazing you know because all the time when I look at them, I'm like, oh God, I'm protecting my family and they're all good. I have no guilt. I have nothing, you know, just to take my medication. It's a joy really, because I know that I have people that depend on me to take this medication so that they are okay as well. I feel like a, some kind of hero. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Oh my gosh. That's such a beautiful way to look yeah. at it. I mean, you are, it's such an expression of love 
mm-hmm. to be able to to be like my power is that I get to protect you. I mean, how cool and is you that? Well. Totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. Like we get to protect each other, and I think that's. I mean, such a narrative that's in the world now with COVID as well, yeah. just trying to, to educate people on how to care for one another and follow those rules and protect one another. Um, it's amazing, really. Although it's really kind of scary because you, you never know. As much as we all know that you is equals to you, um, my, the first test that she had, like the only test that she has had so far, it was really scary to, all, to wait all the two weeks for the results sure. because I'm like, what if something happened? What if right. I'm part of the, the zero point something percentage that uh, is able mm. to infect children, you know? Oh, and even now I'm still kind of on the edge because now okay. we only have the six weeks, the first six weeks test, and then she'll only get another text test at nine months, which is really scary because now she's mixed feeding. She's taking breast milk as well as mm-hmm. other foods. So it's kind of... It's scary. Okay. So yeah. it's, I mean, it, but it's a new experience for you. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I think first year of motherhood, difficult for everybody. Um, I mean, this year with COVID around, I mean, Yo. can you sh- share with us like how you've been feeling and coping with all of that? And like, I mean, I can't imagine that access to healthcare for you and your daughter has been easy. And now I have like very overprotective parents who didn't even want me to go out, like go out for shopping or go feed my cravings when I was pregnant, when the mm. COVID was full. It was, it was, yo, it was hectic. It was really hectic. <laughs> my God, I can't imagine. Everything you touch, you need to sanitize your hands. Like sure. it was, it was really bad. And I only went out when I went for my clinics and checkups. And luckily for, for the ART, I, I got the multi-monthly dispense. So it was really not everyday visits. Yeah. Yeah. I only went there when I went for my, my clinic. Even now, I'm not allowed to go to town with her. <laughs> she stays with wow. the grannies or yeah. the nanny. Because they say we never know uh, what would happen. We never know what people do at their lives as much as we try by all means to abide by the regulations we, we never know yeah sure so the only time my baby goes out is go to the clinic and that's all so it's really oh, wow. bad because now you want the baby to explore you want the baby to be yeah. able to sustain the immune system you know so that they they breathe this air and stuff right right world. she needs like exposure yeah. to the to her outside world exactly that word yeah yeah totally mm-hmm. um is so just an interesting thing you touched on there you said um so you were able to get the multi dispense medication yeah it really helps because you only go after like 3 months to the facility to get your medication okay. and if if you have your medication already when you go for ANC, it's kind of easier for you. Like the the time you take at the facility is shorter than when you have to take the ANC uh, services plus the ART services. So it's okay. shorter and you're able to go home as quick as possible. All right. Um, in your experience, were there any surprises in the PMTC process for you? Or did you feel like you kind of already understood everything? There were really no surprises, but it was amazing to go through what I've been preaching. You know, sure. yeah. um, having to know the how how scared these mothers be all the time when we teach them all these things. It was mm. just really amazing because now I'll be able to talk about what I know rather than just saying yeah. things that I really don't know and not knowing the challenges that they go through and just sitting there with them at the ANC clinic knowing what they go through for instance we have mm. we have we have young young girls who come pregnant and then um partners rejected the pregnancy so in Lesotho you find that we we advise that girls bring their partners to the ANC clinic for support it's it's really touchy to know what stories they 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 say to know what challenges they come across with the partners and stuff and how unsupportive some partners are so we we really need to ease down on that and make sure that we we help them disclose the pregnancy to their parents or someone who would be supportive through this journey because really yes you need support someone who would help you um 
remind you the ANC visits, someone would help you with the signs of birth and stuff. So yeah. Right. So Jay, wild. one other yeah. thing, one other thing I want to raise is that um, when when you are when you are in this motherhood journey and you're HIV positive, we mm-hmm. should really make sure that we give our children the 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 syrups that they give at the facility. The um, what do they call those? They the neverapin prophylaxis and the okay. CPA. Yeah, some, I, I realized that some people, because children are, are really not used to this medication stuff, they sure. kind of don't want to take it. So try by all means, you make sure that your baby take those because it's okay. really important. As much as you are taking the, the, the pills to prevent the, the HIV to get to them, yep. you also need that supplement medications for them, the prophylaxis, so that they're okay all the time. Yeah. So that's, I mean, the one thing that I feel like I've been really inspired by having known you and so many of our other ambassadors is the drive that younger people are having through their own experiences like you're going through now to become healthcare workers and to become a part of helping evolving the system so that Mm -hmm. we can put into practice some of these ideas and these concepts that you're sharing where you know, just the slightest, like extra, like 30 seconds and the correct question asked can mm. really change the perspective of the person that's in that chair, the mother mm. or the partner to, that will determine whether they'll listen to you or not, or whether they'll take their medication and, and adhere to the schedule they have to be on. Um, mm. And so there, you know, it's, I've always felt through my experience that there's, that I've always wanted more of a human element to my healthcare. Mm-hmm. I, I've been through so a lot of different doctors in my life from different hospitals I've been to where I feel like I'm just another statistic on a piece of paper, you know, and, and, and I'm not, and I'm not actually being seen until I met this one doctor who like surfs and he loves art and he plays music. And now it's like, before mm-hmm. I even talk to him about, you know, my medical situation, you know, life, it's just about like life, in general and how in general. we're doing mm-hmm. um and i think that's something you and i feel very similar on when it comes to you know that how about saying treat. like yeah treat treat us like treat us like people we're not just a piece of data you know what i mean yeah and, and we're not represented by our hiv it's a part of us but i'm jake you're d and you're my sister from another mister and we are just living the best life we can and we want to be seen and I think that's uh, that's a very powerful message. It's a very pow- powerful message. Um, it is, yeah. So being a mom now, officially, mm-hmm. you know your your role being a mother uh, in a in a fight for an AIDS free generation. Um, why do you think that's that's so powerful, or do you, or how do you feel about being a mother now that has an HIV negative child? who can now be a part of that ongoing effort to create an age regeneration. Yeah, actually that is, that is true. Mothers are, are, are the ones who are holding the age regeneration thing because if we don't adhere to our medication, then our children will be positive. That says new infections, mm-hmm. that says no age regeneration. So we really need to take all the charge be the heroes that we are, take our medications and end AIDS in all and end this HIV thing. I mean, it's true it won't end, 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 but right. we are the ones who are in a, in a, in a, in a forefront sure. in, in ending an AIDS, in, in, in making an AIDS-free generation. As much as we, we don't know how our kids will do in terms when they are teenagers and stuff, but at least we know we've done our part. And if mothers own that health and see examples like yourself, D, who owned your health and you're like, you know what? I have a beautiful family. I have a beautiful partner. I'm going to do this. I have support. And, and so I, I, I'm with you. Mothers, mothers are the window to an age free generation, you know, and it brings me a great amount of joy to know that you're surrounded by the amount of support and love that you had. Um, yeah. So I think last but not least, I mean, the, 
you have a bright future ahead of you. You get to watch this ray of sunshine grow in your life. Uh, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I know prior to this, I'm sure having a baby was one of your dreams. And now that dream's a reality. So where do you go from here? What's in these future? So much. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, I have a lot of things to do. Like, I have a baby to, to teach things. I have a baby to, to educate. I mean, I also want to educate myself. It's just mm. a lot much going on. So I'm just hoping to, to keep on motivating people, keep on doing what I do best, advocating for good services, friendly services, um, having friendly healthcare workers and educating myself more. I hope so. And help my baby grow negatively and my husband stay negative. So mm -hmm. that's you, my goal. You keep doing what you're doing because you're doing everything in the most amazing way. And Thank I love you. you for it. You've been... Thank you so much. You've been a bright ray of sunshine in my life. Um, and that, that partnership and that camaraderie and that family is something that uh, so represents what my mother dreamed of yeah. being a mother in this world for her son and for, P and for new mothers like yourself. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's really, really, really sweet to be able to just congratulate you on your beautiful child and on thank being a mother you. and thank you for everything that you do for for me and for everyone in our world because we wouldn't be able to continue doing what we're doing if it wasn't for beautiful people like yourself i really appreciate it really um you have been amazing as well because we have an example of what your mother has done has fighted for like all these years and now we we just need to keep her legacy up and going and doing much, much more so that she'd be proud wherever she is, you know. It is, uh, you know, she, she would be super proud and, um, you know, and, and there couldn't be a better community of everyone that we have in our extended family at Egg Path uh, to continue, you know, fighting for her dream of an, of an age-free generation. Um, Amazing. Well, I want to thank you again for joining us and for everybody watching. Um, happy Mother's Day. Uh, so, Dee, thank you. I can't wait thank to see you, you so soon much. in person. And, I can't wait as well. Enjoy your first Mother's Day. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>